Republican presidential candidate Tim Pawlenty unveiling a plan to simplify individual tax rates and cut taxes uh, on business. He joins us. Um, Governor, thank you for, uh, for joining us this morning. We appreciate it. Delighted to do it. Good morning to you. Uh, the, you this is a far-reaching uh, plan that you've got in the Wall Street Journal. Talks about it as generally positive. Uh, five percent, if you could assume five percent GDP growth over ten years, that goes a long way towards uh, towards answering a lot of our, our problems in terms of on the revenue side. But I, I can tell you that, that most people are going to say if, if you cut individual rates and business rates to these levels, uh, without getting rid of deductions, they're going to think we're going to have a huge revenue shortfall just, just when you just add the numbers up. How do you counter that? Well, a few things. First of all, I reject President Obama's view that we should be, uh, have a declinist attitude. I think we should get the car of our economy out of neutral and put it into drive and get this thing going. So it starts with the notion that we're not going to accept anemic growth. We're not going to accept standing still. We're going to have a big aspirational goal. So that's going to be 5% GDP. It's a goal. How are we going to accomplish that? Every business leader across every sector of this economy, large, small, across the whole country that I meet with day in and day out says essentially the same thing. Get the government off my back. So this proposal uh, does a number of things. It's not our full set of proposals, but this is the tax side of it. I've cut the corporate rate in half from 35 to 15, more than half, but it does eliminate the deductions, credits, and exemptions underneath that. On the individual side, go from six rates to two. 10 and 25, uh, simpler, flatter, fair, more transparent, but we keep the individual deductions and exemptions there. And then we also say, let's get rid of capital gains, dividend, and interest income. It would be a startlingly pro-growth. It would ignite the economy in a positive way. But we're not just cutting taxes. Uh, we're also cutting spending. And if you look at what we're proposing over 10 years, assuming dynamic scoring for the growth of the tax cuts and the spending cuts, uh, it actually pays for itself and then some over a 10-year period. Yeah, you know, there are, you know, even the journal pointed out, 5% uh, growth rates have been done, and there have been some periods back in the 80s, uh, but only three, four years. And then in the 90s, some people would say it was fueled by, I don't know, the Internet bubble or the tech bubble in the, in the late 90s when we did 5%. Um, so that's hard on the one hand, and then I guess other people are just going to worry about, um, income disparity. If, if we're cutting taxes and, and cutting spending, it just seems like you're going to hear it's trickle down too, like QE2, or you're going to hear it's, it's just the same old supply side that Republicans have been talking about for the past 20 years. And look where it got us last time with the financial crisis is what you're going to hear. Well, I think the trade-off for most people in this country, 95% of us, Joe, and I come from a working class, you know, blue-collar family and, and upbringing, for most people in this country, their pathway forward for a quality of life is whether they have a job and hopefully a good paying job, and if they lose their job, have the ability to get another one. So the measure of a successful economy is not whether some small percentage of people get a little more uh, wealth or a little less wealth. The measure of the economy, is it growing broadly? Is it adding jobs? Are we uh, giving economic opportunity to the people that we're trying to serve? And if that happens and we ignite job growth and we ignite uh, the economy to grow in a positive way, uh, I don't care whether the, you know, we shift the wealth a little bit this way or that way. That's a secondary measure to whether we, we do the bigger goal, which is to have it be a pro-jobs economy. And that's not what's happening now. you got people who you know, have stagflation in their wages. Uh, we have people who can't get a job. We've got uh, unbearable levels of unemployment. So uh, you know, don't measure this by whether the, a few more people get a little wealthy or not. Yeah, I understand that, Governor, but I, I, I can tell you, Another thing you're going to hear is that, and you know, I know polls and, and uh, some are good, some are bad, but it seems that a lot of people want government services. And the people would say if you want them, you got to pay for them. And I'm talking about Medicare, I'm, I'm talking about just the myriad of entitlements that we've grown since the 30s and then again in the 60s. And we've added them. They're expensive. They're unfunded. They're, they're, and suddenly they're, they're third rails and they're sacred cows. And every time you try to touch them, you're going to see a New York 26 or you're going to see uh, one of these polls that says 75, 80 percent uh, of people don't want their Medicare touch. You're going to hear Speaker Pelosi, former Speaker Pelosi saying, I won't allow one benefit to be cut for Medicare, even though people pay in a hundred grand and get four hundred fifty thousand dollars worth of benefits over their lifetime. But you're still going to hear it. 
Well, a couple of things. One is uh, don't assume because we cut taxes that revenues go down. In fact, during the Reagan tax cuts in the aftermath of that, federal revenues went up, and they went up dramatically. So a pro-growth agenda that gets the economy going doesn't uh, negatively affect federal revenues. That's number one. And number two, as to the entitlements and the spending that you mentioned, and I think that's a fair point, uh, look, this is going to be math very soon. It doesn't matter what Nancy Pelosi says. She's out in outer space in terms of the substance and the reality of this. It's going to be math, not a matter of right versus left, but a matter of sixth grade mathematics. And I'm running for president because I'm going to look the American people in the eye and have the Jack Nicholson question. You know, Jack Nicholson said in A Few Good Men, you can't handle the truth. Well, I think the American people can. You don't scare them. You don't freak them out, but show them specific things that will work. So on Social Security, if you ask people, do you want Social Security cut, 80% of Americans say no. But if you say, do you think it would be okay if we gradually raise the retirement age for the next generation, the ones that are coming into the workforce over time and give them fair notice that that's going to happen, a majority of Americans are okay with that. If you say, can we at least means test the COLA, so if you're wealthy in Social Security, you won't get the annual cost of living adjustment, but if you're middle income or lower income, you will, they'll say, yeah, that's okay too. Uh, so that takes leadership and it takes courage and President Obama won't even address these issues. Where is his plan? He's the leader of the country. He's the President of the United States hey, and Kate, you can't even find up. him on what he's going to do to fix these problems. He won't address it, doesn't speak about it. I'm running for president because i got the experience and the record to fix these problems and Nancy Pelosi's words don't mean diddly. All right, how I mean, are you going to, what, what, do you, what do you say to this? Uh, Bush too came in with a surplus. Um, you say that tax cuts pay for themselves. He, he cut taxes. The surplus was gone. Now we, you know he increased the deficit um, exponentially, and the tax cuts did, in no way paid for themselves. What, how are you going to answer that? We're not proposing what President uh, George W. Bush did or even what Ronald Reagan did. In those cases, they both cut taxes and increased spending. That's not what we're proposing. I'm proposing to cut taxes and cut spending. That's very different. So this notion, you know, President Reagan, with all due respect, I, was a, he, I am a huge Reagan fan, but he cut a deal with Tip O'Neill where they did basically $2 of spending increases for every dollar of tax cuts. Uh, that's not what we're proposing. Um, suddenly Romney uh, is now, I, I'm hearing he's the perceived front runner. Uh, Governor, I guess it was a Washington Post poll. I, I don't know whether you look at that poll and feel good or feel bad because it had registered, it had him beating President Obama with registered voters by, by three percentage uh, points or so. Are you going to have to go on the offensive eventually um, with, with Governor Romney, or are you guys going to be friends for a while longer? <laughs> well, I, I, first of all, I respect uh, and like Mitt Romney. I serve him as governor. We're going to have some differences on policy, but it will remain uh, respectful. I'm going to follow Reagan's 11th commandment to not start being a negative on other Republicans. Our goal is to defeat Barack Obama and get this country back on track. But beyond that, uh, these early polls nationally don't mean a lot. I'll acknowledge that Mitt is going to be the front runner to start because of his name ID and legacy uh, financial infrastructure from last time and his uh, you know, personal wealth and the like. However, uh, we're interested not in how we're doing in national polls where only half the people in the poll even know my name. We're more interested over time in how we're doing in the early states of Iowa, New Hampshire, and South yeah. Carolina to start. And uh, I think you'll see these numbers change over the six, next uh, six months to a year, as they always do. So we'll acknowledge he's the front runner for now, but uh, those early polls usually don't predict the final outcome. Tim, you've told us before that you're not going to be the first one to, to go dirty or to lash out at other Republicans, but if somebody smears you, you're going to fight back? Well, Becky, I'm an old hockey player. I still play a little old-timers hockey in my uh, advanced years, and so you know, I'm not adverse to throwing elbows if it comes to that. But I'm going to try to my best to say, let's stay focused on Barack Obama. Uh, but if somebody on the Republican side starts throwing elbows, uh, you know, we'll get in the middle of the scrum. I mean, can you envision calling a Republican a doofus, or are you going <laughs> to you going to reserve that just for for Democrats? That was the strongest word yeah. I've heard you. I've heard you. What about Romney Palenti? Would uh, could both end in a Y? Uh, is, is that ever <laughs> is that ever crossed your? It's got a ring to it. Uh, that ever crossed your mind? Are you talking about the, the as a ticket? Yeah, you believe that 17 months ago. Uh, you're gonna get these yeah, questions. I'm not, yeah, you're not running yeah, for. Yeah, I'm, I'm not. I'm not. Uh, I'm not running for vice president. I can tell you now. I don't want my name put for that, and I wouldn't put it forward for that. I'm running for president, and we're gonna win. I just wonder what whether you know people it, we're going to get to a, a point 
where you cross that line where people are no longer saying, you know, waiting for some other, I don't know, candidate to, to come in. I wonder if we're past that point yet. Uh, I guess there's. I think that. I, yeah. Yeah. I yeah. think the field is most mostly set, Joe. I don't. I think uh, the idea that or that somebody else is going to get in later, I think, is not likely to happen at this point. So, and I, I like our position. Uh, you know, we had right. um, in the national polls a year ago, 15 percent name ID, and now 50 percent name ID, or a little better. And so, if you ask people uh, how they feel about it, you, got to remember, for me at least, about half the people still don't know who I am. And as we get support excuse me, name ID and familiarity, we're getting more and more support. So I like the trend line in that regard. Right. Well, I, it, probably just a coincidence that these appearances on Squawk and then 15 to 15, and uh, I'm sure it's not directly uh, directly linked to your appearances here, but certainly it, it, it's probably not hurting. Yeah, you know, we, we, uh, we hear that often, actually, out on the trail. When people come up, they say, uh, you know, I didn't know who you were, but since I saw you on Squawk, I'm with you. Wow. wow, you're you invited back <laughs> again. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I think he's joking. Okay, anyway. Tim, uh, Governor, we appreciate your time this morning. Uh, but, uh, thank you. Well, and I hope for your listeners, if they're interested in the campaign, they'll go to timpalenti.com. We appreciate uh, you, the time on the show this morning. All right. That's easy to, uh, easy to do to Tim Palenti. Uh,